can't slide that piece in there. What about on this one? Oh yeah. I should be able to get it up in here. Up in here, up in here. character also has um, a couple of moving parts um, one of them is his big ass gun which the, it's like a it's like an arm cannon but it moves like a Gatling gun so it it rotates the tip so um, I'm definitely gonna be building that and I'm gonna make it rotate and his hands are so honking big it's like four times the size of my hands so uh, what I've done is I've built what I call a prehensile hand it's like a mechanical hand so that it actually comes out further than my hand but when I wiggle my fingers the fingers on the mechanical hand will move as well and it will close so I, I built the bones and cabling all that has already been built for that for that hand um, so all I got left to do in the hand is what I call skinning putting the outer stuff on you know like the, like the, the outer look which I'll do all out of foam of course um, but I'm not going to do that just yet because I have to first uh, in my opinion get the um, the, the, the chest piece done and the shoulders. Say it again, John Jerry. Ah, okay. But yeah, so once I get the um, the chest and the shoulders done, then I can go ahead and complete the hands. Because I want to make sure everything is in the right proportion according to the character art. You know, I don't want to do the skinning on a hand too small or too big, I want to get it just right. Alright, so that's that piece. This one. So, I'm going to go ahead with the Dremel, I got to smooth this out, um, and these ends on both these pieces here, so that I can go ahead and get them into place. Tell you what, the one should go do a monitor, he never go back. <laughs> okay, I'm also going to um, put a little bit of a bevel on this piece here too, so that way instead of it laying like this, it's going to come up a lot sharper. That's what I need. Actually, shoot, I can probably just do this. I'm gonna think about it. Just cut my bevel in. And I'll still go back behind it with the Dremel just to, you know, get everything just right. <laughs> I hear you, Kitty. Yeah, I, I, I love my dual monitor. So I got my little small one right here. As you guys probably see in the stream. But then I got my big one. Big 40 inch. 
four is a 42 inches. One of those two. But yeah, that's that's sitting at the right angle that it needs to sit. Awesome. Same to this one. Whenever you're doing a bevel cut, make sure your um, piece is very nice and sharp. Very, very important. Hey, Mega Potato, how you doing, man? <laughs> Ooh, jambalaya. Ooh, nice. Cut a little bit off the edge here. Well, you gotta have the D now. Well, Got to have the D. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That's looking smexy. Babe, you got my wrench? Because I need it. Sometimes, the creative glue locks up on you. In the cap, I hate when that happens. But that's why we have wrenches. Unlock it, so to speak. Oh, what you make it out of? What did you make your carbine out of? Um, well, she's kind of, um, my assistant in, in some ways. Um, I lovingly call, nickname her DT. And that pretty much means durability tester. If I put it in her hands and it survives, it's good to go. Um, but also, like, she'll I'll have her help me, um, like, mold my lenses. Um. Put some base color paints down sometimes. She is, a, you know, a, an amazing assistant. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, she did a um a pretty good Steve cosplay for Minecraft. Minecraft Steve. She did that one for you know her son. So you probably wonder why I'm using crazy glue and not hot glue for this. <coughs> I'm going to be sanding up in here, you know, to make it flush, basically. Um, and when you use hot glue, a couple of things happen. One, you, it's hard to get a nice clean edge when you're using hot glue because it's so hot, it tends to um, deform the foam right at the edge. So you don't get the nice clean meeting of, of both pieces. Um, but also, when I go to sand this bad boy, the um, hot glue will heat up and it'll start to, to, to kind of like almost fling um, pieces of, of, of hot glue all over the place. So, yeah, I have a hot ass mess basically.
Well, when I when I glue the um, sandals in place, Kitty, I'm gonna use contact cement. I actually have a cam over there, which is um, even stronger than you know, crazy glue. So, <clears throat> yeah, but yeah, yeah, definitely going that route. Or this this is cool too because this stuff here it um it sets in like <clears throat> 30 seconds and um, it cures fully in 30 minutes so it's really good to be able to you know work with it because you're holding it down just for a little bit of time and then you're moving on to your next next piece Always wipe the tip. Wipe the tip. Wipe the tip. Now I know I'm gonna have to put a little bit of crazy glue in the center piece there because I don't put any up underneath it. Now even though I, I've done the crazy glue. Um, like anything else that I do, I'm going to go back behind it on the inside and hit it with a bead of glue. Well, of hot glue, always. That just helps to further reinforce you know, the entire piece. Let's see. Yep, got to put a little bit up in there. And then, I'll just go ahead and start the process of just sanding pieces down so you can't even tell that these were two separate pieces. Um crazy glue is still very very strong. Um the section that I have it attached to really is not gonna be moving at all. Um but it's still a small idea to use both, you know. <laughs> cool. And sometimes if you don't want to get your fingers caught in the glue, just use like a little marker tip or a pen tip and you just press it down with that, you know. I got big ass fat fingers, so <laughs> this is better sometimes. Oh, also, um, with the boots, um, or the shoes, really shoes and boots, whatever. Um, I know you noticed that it looks kind of raggedy on the sides here where the sole is. I wasn't worried about that at all because I'm gonna be doing a top piece that's gonna cover all of that. Um, basically, the boots have um, instead of flat flat soles like this, they're these really really seriously pointed treads, you know, going across the entire boot. And I don't want to do that for safety reasons. Number one. Number two. Only because, uh, well, also because if it's resting on points, I'm a heavy dude. I don't want it crushing and looking like shit, especially after I paint it. So that's the reason why I've done, I made, I made these shoes here where the, the treads are solid, they're flat, and then I'll just do the the, the teeth basically on the outside for you know decorative. That way, I'm still getting the support that I need my weight won't crush the teeth you know all that other good stuff um, I might actually 